Corporate profits and CEO pay are soaring despite the president's promise to be a champion of the working class. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> Donald Trump has many weird rhetorical tics. He knows like five words. He'll never correct himself if he mispronounces something. And in general, he sounds like Joe Pesci after five shots of Novocaine. <laughs> But one of the weirdest rhetorical tics he has is a story he likes to repeat at public events. He keeps saying that big, strong, tough guys are coming up to him and crying because he's saving the economy. He's done it many, many times. And he repeated it again during a roundtable on the economy this week. A strong man came up to me, tough kind of a guy, <laughs> and said, uh, I want to thank you, Mr. President, for saving our country. Yeah. And, and he, had, he had tears coming down his eyes. Men that were tough and strong, women that were tough and strong, they'd see me, their tears coming down their eyes. A man came up to me and he was crying. Strong man, big, tough guy, but he was crying. I've had such an incredible experience with the miners. Of the nine, eight of them were crying. Steel workers came up to me and they were crying. Big people from big companies, they've been to the White House 50 times. In one case, I won't say who, the person came into the Oval Office and started to cry. I mean, there are so many things that are weird about Donald Trump, but this is one of the weirdest. Who are these big, strong, tough guys <laughs> who are supposedly coming up to him and crying? You gotta see them. They're big, muscular weightlifters, <laughs> and I mean, they're just bawling. One of them came up to me, tears streaming down his face, and he asked me a question. It broke my heart. He said, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? And I... <laughs> Trump, of course... <laughs> Trump, of course, tells these stories because he spent his political career cultivating the myth that he is a hero to the working class. While in reality, as we found out yet again recently, he and the political elite he claims to hate have overseen an economy in which corporate profits and CEO pay are soaring. In fact, one of the most profitable companies in the world is even getting a tax refund. An NBC News report reveals that twice as many corporations, are you ready for this, are paying zero taxes under President Trump. A new analysis found twice as many companies paid nothing in taxes last year under the Trump tax law. The number jumped from 30 to 60. Now, this includes major companies like Amazon, Netflix, and Delta. In 2018, Amazon reported more than $11 billion in taxable income and paid $0 in federal taxes. And it's even worse than that. Amazon is actually getting a federal tax refund of $120 million this year. I'm sorry, I don't care if you're a capitalist or a socialist or whatever, but if one of the richest companies in the world run by one of the richest men in the world is getting a tax refund, then the system is up. I mean, Amazon... <laughs> Amazon shouldn't get a refund. It's where regular people go when they get their refund. <laughs> well, thank you, Uncle Sam. Looks like someone's getting that new Brita filter. The imbalance between what corporate CEOs make and what their employees make is staggering and insane. And to demonstrate that, California Congresswoman Katie Porter, a former professor of consumer law, decided to do a simple math problem during a hearing last week with J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon. This year, Dimon got a raise to $31 million, so Porter gave Dimon a budget scenario involving a bank teller who lives in Porter's district to make an entry-level salary. Porter asked Dimon how he would deal with that budget, and he did not have an answer. Here's just the first part of that exchange. She had $2,425 a month. She rents a one-bedroom apartment. That average one-bedroom apartment is going to be $1,600. She spends $100 on utilities, $400 for car expenses and gas. A low food budget is $400. She has a Cricut cell phone, the cheapest cell phone she can get for $40. She has after-school child care because the bank is open during normal business hours. That's $450 a month. That takes her down to negative $567 per month. My question for you, Mr. Diamond, is how should she manage this budget shortfall while she's working full-time at your bank? I, uh, I don't know that all your numbers are accurate. That number is a start, is a generally a starter job. She is a starting employee. She has a six-year-old okay, child. And, this is and, her first job. And you can get those jobs at a high school, and she may have my job one day. Maybe the teller would be better at running your bank than you are. Under Diamond, J.P. Morgan has been fined $2.8 million over improper safeguards for customers, $65 million for trying to rig a benchmark rate, $135 million from the SEC, $13 billion over bad mortgages, and another $1 billion for just a bunch of other scandals. And on 
Top of that, every time I go to your bank, the pens have been stolen from the chains. And how am I supposed to fill out a deposit slip without a pen? Am I supposed to bring my own pen to the bank? Because no one carries pens anymore. Either have more pens or get stronger chains. Also, during that exchange, Diamond actually told Porter those numbers aren't accurate. So Porter responded by posting a photo of herself on Twitter with a whiteboard proving that her numbers were accurate. Look at that. She literally showed her work. This is the first time anyone in Congress has ever gotten extra credit. Usually, the only math members of Congress are doing is counting sheep. It's about trying to do what's right for the whole country. And if your heart doesn't break when you... <laughs> Look at him. You just realized, oh, shit. I fell asleep live on C-SPAN. And based on that camera work, C-SPAN realized that was the most exciting thing that ever happened on C-SPAN. Someone's asleep. Take camera five. We only have one camera. Move camera one. The reporter kept going. She pressed Diamond on how he would solve her constituents' budget shortfall, and he still would not answer. She doesn't have the ability right now to spend your $31 million. Yeah, totally sympathetic. She's short 567. What would you suggest she do? I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Would you recommend that she take out a J.P. Morgan Chase credit card and run a deficit? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Would you recommend that she overdraft at your bank and be charged overdraft fees? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. So, I know you have a lot of... I'd love of... to call up and have a conversation about her financial affairs and see if we can be helpful. See if you can find a way for her to live on less than the minimum that I've described. Just be helpful. You're acting like it's some unsolvable math problem instead of just paying her more money. Diamond's gonna be up all night at a chalkboard trying to crack this one Goodwill hunting style. <laughs> Let's see, she has $2,000 and I have $31 million. Damn it, numbers, why won't you crunch? <laughs> now, the reason... The reason these companies get away with this is basically just because we let them. That's it. They have teams of lawyers that help them use deductions and loopholes, and many of them stash their profits offshore. And that's why Senator Elizabeth Warren unveiled a new plan recently to specifically target companies that don't pay taxes. Today, Elizabeth Warren, uh, the senator from Massachusetts, rolled out a plan to tax big corporations that use loopholes in the tax code. She tweeted, giant companies like Amazon shouldn't be able to get away with paying zero dollars in federal corporate income taxes. Her plan is called the Real Corporate Profits Tax, and it focuses on raising the tax rate for companies that make over $100 million. We've got a corporate tax rate, but as you know, the thing has just been lobbied to death. It's full of loopholes and breaks and special deals so that a company like Amazon that makes $10 billion in profits can walk away paying nothing in taxes. That's just not fair. I love the idea that Warren is taking on one of the most valuable public companies in the world. She should publish her plan on Amazon just so we can see the recommendations below it. You might also like jailing Wall Street bankers or Bernie Sanders yelling at a billionaire. <laughs> We're living in a gilded age, a massive inequality that predates Trump. It's baked into the system. He just lied about it and made it worse. For example, for years, the media has pointed to the stock market as a sign of economic success. And Trump, of course, loves to brag every chance he gets about how well the stock market has done under his presidency. And he did it again this week. We've created a tremendous stock market. People are making a lot of money. Our markets are hitting records all the time. I have many, many records of the highest stock market. The stock market is way up again today, and we're setting a record literally all the time. The stock market is right now almost at an all-time high. I have about 18 records. It then went down a little bit because we had to do a couple of trade deals, and people didn't understand. Now they're starting to say, you know, that was pretty good. That's good what he's doing. Oh, they were saying that? <laughs> were they also crying? <laughs> they were saying it's good what he's doing, and they were, I mean, tears <laughs> streaming down their faces and then down onto their jack torsos. <laughs> These guys were so strong and so sad, <laughs> just pumping iron and crying their eyes out. <laughs> but the stock market is not the real economy. In fact, it's mostly just a sign of how the wealthy few are faring. One study found that nearly 40% of the market is owned by the richest 1% of the population, while the bottom 90% of the population owns just 19% of stock market wealth. 
This is why it just makes basic sense to people that the rich should pay more in taxes. On top of the corporate tax, Warren also proposed a wealth tax on assets over $50 million. And Bernie Sanders even went on Fox News this week to attack Trump's tax bill during a town hall, and he actually got cheers from the crowd. I happen to believe that a tax bill written and pushed by Trump who told the American people that that tax bill, some of you may recall, would not benefit the wealthy. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, it's not going to benefit the wealthy. 83% of the benefits went to the top 1%. So I think that's a bad idea. And in my view, people, whether it's me, you, you probably make a lot more money than I do, <laughs> but whether it's me or you or anybody else, I think wealthy people and large Corporations that are making billions of profits should start paying their fair share of taxes. But Senator. And that was on Fox News. I mean, talking like that and getting cheered on Fox News is like getting cheered for praising the Yankees in Boston. <laughs> He's right. Gene is a legend, and Starbucks is a superior option to Dunkies. <laughs> After that moment, the Fox News anchors asked Bernie why he doesn't choose to voluntarily pay more in taxes than he owes. And he turned the question around on them. Your marginal tax rate, tax rate was 26% because of President yeah. Trump's tax cuts. So why not say, you know, I'm leading this revolution. I'm not going to take those. <laughs> Come on. But there he, I am, I paid the taxes that I owe. And by the way, why don't you got Donald Trump up here and ask him how much he pays in taxes. Yeah. Well, we will. Yeah, well, look. I am eagerly awaiting your doing that. First of all, there's nothing better than old man sarcasm. <laughs> Why don't you put your phone away at the dinner table? I will. Well, I am eagerly awaiting you doing that. And when you are done, maybe we can participate in the social media I grew up with called eye contact. <laughs> and then, after that, Bernie directly addressed Trump and challenged him to release his tax returns. I guess the president watches your network a little bit, right? <laughs> hey, President Trump, my wife and I just released 10 years. Please do the same. Let the American people know how much we And you know Trump was watching that because, you know, he always watches. And also, Bernie on Fox News felt like one of those crossover episodes where a character from one show goes on another one, like when Fonzie went on Laverne and Shirley. But... This is one that didn't make any sense. It was like an episode of The Sopranos where Carrie Bradshaw stopped by the Bada Bing. <laughs> I didn't find love in New Jersey, but you can't blame a gaba girl for trying. <laughs> one thing's for sure, it's a night I'll never forget about. <laughs> I'm a kid. <laughs> I'm actually a Miranda. <laughs> We're living in an age of soaring corporate profits and CEO pay, and when struggling Americans find out how much CEOs are making or how little in taxes they're paying, they're all saying the same thing. <laughs> this has been a closer look. <laughs>